Hey you. Hey. You like jazz? Jazz fan? Jazz? Anybody? Jazz? Uh, no jazz fans. Sorry. Hey, welcome to the channel. Let me begin by telling you what I thought about jazz before 2003. Jazz was a lot of noise. It was about people just squawking on instruments, just playing God knows what, no melody, no nothing. It's, it's just noise. You know, it's kind of like uh, the Grinch listening down in Whoville's. Noise, noise, noise. That's all I hear. I couldn't stand the stuff. And, you know, I'd been in band. We had, like, jazz band. <laughs> I wasn't in jazz band. And they're just playing these solos. They go, I, I, I absolutely don't get it. I, I don't. And me, I had zero interest in jazz. But in 2003, I had a neighbor move in across the street. And he was a jazz musician. His wife had a very good job, so they could afford a very nice house. And he could pursue what he wanted to do. And this was out in a small town in Minnesota where I don't think there was a lot of jazz going on. But we began talking. And I just told him about my, my passion for music, my love for music, and my collection. He goes, well, can I see it? And, you know, what's more exciting than have, like, a musician say, can I see your record and CD collection? So, sure. So I bring him down to my music room, and he's just looking, and he's looking, and he's, he's not finding anything. He's not pulling anything out. He doesn't show any interest whatsoever. And, you know, this is my collection. I'm proud of this. It, and nothing, nothing. So I finally said, is there something you're looking for? And he goes, yeah, what kind of jazz do you have? <laughs> and go, well, I guess he is a jazz beast. He's just like, whoa. So I, uh, let me think. Oh, yeah, I got some jazz. And I pull out. <laughs> Got Herbie Hancock, Future, uh, Future Shock. This had, you know, that Rocket song on there. No, 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 wasn't it. I, I, I got another jazz. Ramsey Lewis. I have a Ramsey Lewis album. That's jazz. No. This is, come over to my place. So we went over there. And he didn't have records. Everything was CDs. Quite a few of them. They were all jazz gave me this. That's Miles Davis kind of blues. Just take that home and listen to it. And I did. And it changed me. I mean, it it absolutely changed my thought about jazz and kind of how I listened to music. It was incredible. And I just kept playing and playing it. Uh, I brought it back and he says, well, try this one. And it gave me the CD, I have the album version, Bitches Brew. That was so different from this. But it's like, wow, this is great. I'm liking this. I like the beat. And and, and then, you know, I bring that back. It goes, what about this? Try this. It's the Bad Plus. And they did a uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. They, they, they did a cover of that on there. And I really liked it. And I bring it back. It goes, try this. It was Bella Fleck, and and I listened to that, his banjo jazz, and I liked it. And it suddenly occurred to me, I like jazz. It was really good. But I was 44 years old, and I had never listened to jazz. And I just thought it was just kind of a waste of music and not worth it. And suddenly, my eyes were opened. And so I want to kind of go through a few of the things that I did for my gateway. And this was my gateway. This was the door that allowed me to get into jazz. And to this day, it is my all-time favorite album. Number one album out of anything in my collection. Uh, on here's, here's a original press of it. Just beautiful, beautiful album uh, from Miles Davis. So let's go through some of the things I learned. First off, number one, you need to have a guide. How do you know what to buy? I mean, jazz, look at this. This is the All Music Guide to Jazz. See how thick that is? That's a lot of jazz, man. This is the All Music Guide to Rock. 
They're the same. Actually, jazz is a little bit bigger because jazz has been around. I mean, since, you know, uh, 1910s, you think of ragtime happening, uh, Dixieland, all that going on. That's a lot. How, if you don't know nothing about jazz, what do you do? This helped me a lot. You can go online, but still, you're searching. A book like this, it has all the artists, it has all the, it, it rates the different albums, and what I look for is they had asterisks, they had stars on what was really important. This is the one that you should buy. This is the one that you should get. That's what really, that helped me. So I took this, and here is Cat, because Cat loves jazz too. He's kind of a jazzy cat. This helped me get into and, and to learn what's out there and what's available. Big help. You need a guide. CD versus album. I'm here. I'm here. CD versus album. What do you do? Again, we could go back to Miles Davis. Do what you want, the CD or the album. CD is a really inexpensive way to get into it. It's, it's, a, it's an easy way to find out what you like. And for instance, what we got going on in the background right now is Wayne Shorter's Juju. I don't have this on album, which would be fun. It's going to cost a lot of money. But on the CD, they come with the alternative takes. So you can hear all, all these this other type of music, fairly inexpensive. <laughs> Cat. Uh, and, and so CDs are a great way. If you're just getting into it, you can find them. But... There, there's, there's other cheaper ways. You just have to decide which way you want to go. If you want to buy the originals or if you want to buy the represses. Greatest Hits. What about Greatest Hits? I, I think Greatest Hits are a fantastic way to go if you're learning. Because they got this Dave Brubeck box set. I don't like all of Dave Brubeck. But I went through this greatest hits and I learned what I do like and that's what I went after and I began finding those particular songs on those particular albums and that was a great help. Bella Fleck. You know, I didn't know anything about Bella Fleck, but I started with the greatest hits and then I expanded into his other music as I learned what I like and don't like. I mean, that's what I like about a greatest hits. If you don't know something about an artist, you know, that book helps me, that will say, this is their best, try it. You know, it's, it's your opinion, but to me it helps. But a greatest hits really gives you a feel for that particular artist. Learn the players. And what I mean by learn the players, jazz musicians, jumped all over the place they helped each other out and you know when you look at here you know this is you know on miles davis here we have um miles davis there's cannonball adderley john coltrane winston kelly bill evans paul chambers um jimmy cop i began looking at that so what did i do well i Cannonball Adderley was on there, so I went and I bought me some Cannonball Adderley CDs, and this was one of my first ones. This was my guide said, that's great, mercy, 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 incredible. John Coltrane was on there, so I thought, well, I need to try John Coltrane. So I went out and I bought John Coltrane CD. Bill Evans is on there. Well, <laughs> why not just buy the complete Bill Evans uh, Riverside Recordings? What the heck? Okay, I'd been into jazz a little bit, but I really wanted to learn more about him. This was a great way to get all of his stuff. So, you know, when you get a jazz CD, look who's playing. And if you're really liking this, start digging into that artist. And it will just keep bringing you into new areas. You need to learn the styles. Rock has a lot of genres, so does jazz. I mean, you think of jazz, you think swing, there's Dixieland, there's cool jazz, there's West Coast, there's bop, bebop, hard bop, there's modal. You have um, fusion, acid jazz, soul jazz, um, uh, ragtime. I mean, it's all over the place. 
you have to learn your styles. Here's what I learned. What I learned is I like bebop, bop, because it has a certain rhythm. It's fast paced, but it keeps going. And it just kind of makes you snap your fingers. I like some of the fusion when there's a good bass and drum rhythm happening because it has funk. But there's other fusion I can't stand. I can't stand acid jazz. I, I don't get it. It's complex. But that's not my listening habit. You, everybody has your own listening habit. You have the own, your type of music that you like. Jazz will fit into that. There is a genre of jazz that fits you. You may not like jazz, but guess what? There's a genre in there that fits your listening habits. And you got to find it. And by learning these different styles, it will help you. And then you buy one, you start seeing who's on there, and you start experimenting and going into other stuff. When it comes to jazz, how much do you want to spend? That, that becomes a big part of the equation, you know? How much money you want to put out? Uh, here we got Dave Brubeck. This is Time Out. This is an absolute gateway album. This is a great way to get into it because it was so popular. It was made for the general public. This is an original Time Out. They aren't that expensive, but then there was this inexpensive version of Time Out that you could buy for, you know, under 20 bucks, about 15 great way to go. If you want it on vinyl, maybe you can't find an original, go this route. You know, unless you're an audiophile, and that really makes a difference. Some, some of these are done, you know, not, not by master tapes, but they sound great. And if you're going into it, it's better to have something than just hold out. Nope, I have to find an original. Why? Get it, listen to it, enjoy it, and look for that original as you go so you get a good one. But don't sit there and jip yourself out of it. Listen to other types of music. Well, I mean, you know, for instance, there's soundtrack here, Fighting Forrester. On here, it was all jazz. What did it help me? I got into Ornette Coleman because he was playing on here. I got into Bill Frizzle because he was playing on the soundtrack. I listened to it and made me get into other things. There was this CD that came out at the beginning of the Us, Us 3, and they did a song called Cantaloupe, Flip Fantasia. Didn't know much about it, but what I learned was, let's see here, hold on, I got the album here. I learned that was done by Herbie Hancock. I didn't know that. So I wound up buying this. Cantaloupe Island is on here. And it was taken. That's what they used for this. So another good way to start getting into more music, into more jazz. And this is one of these inexpensive presses. I got this album for 12 bucks. Would I like an original? Of course. But I wanted this. CD 10. Uh, expand your horizons and, and that's that's that, that, that's with any music with jazz you can really start to experiment you look at Miles Davis you know Miles Davis had all these different periods some people like his 50s some 60s some 70s but he he kept expanding and he had all these different players and allowed you allowed me to get into different genres and to start to hear how he changed and it really helped it expanded what i like as far as jazz it made a huge difference how deep do you want to go again OG, you know, you want original. Here's here's an original I found uh, recently last year of Cooking from Miles Davis. It costs, it costs a lot, but it is so good. And I was so happy to have this. Uh, but then again, I have this, this is from Cold Train. And you know, this is, it's one of these super in, inexpensive um, re reissues that's been done out, out of Europe. I don't have the original, but I got into this. There is a new series that's out there. You'll hear a lot of people talk about it, Tone Poet. Tone Poet is reissuing all kinds of Blue Note albums. Really neat stuff. You can buy these. You know, and they'll cost you know, anywhere from $25 to $35, but it's a great way to go. 
or just go box sets. You know, I showed you that. You know, here's Miles Davis. This is everything he made on Prestige. Every single song from Prestige. It's a nice CD box set. You know, John Coltrane. It's, there's all these box sets. And you wouldn't believe the Miles Davis ones I have. This is the complete Atlantic recordings. Everything he did for Atlantic is on here. This one here, we have the classic quartet um, from Impulse just um, this big quartet and then we have this volume one and volume two of impulse albums and there's another box set on that that's how deep I wanted to go into Coltrane it's out there and you can really find some great stuff you know I all say you gotta let your ears your ears will guide you. Your ears will take you to where you want to go. They don't lie. And it's just listening to that music and getting a feel for it and enjoying it. You don't have to like it all. Don't feel, oh man, I, I don't like this. I don't know what I'm doing. Nah. It's about what you want and what you like. And that's the thing. There's so much jazz. What appeals to you? You can try the other stuff, but don't worry about it. There's so much in any genre. If you like it, dig into it and enjoy it. And, and, and learn from the VC. That's, that's, that's the final thing I could tell you. You know, I have this one. Uh, one of my favorite uh, jazz guys, or punk, is uh, Dave from Local Bandography. And he, he hooked me up with Joe McPhee. I never would have bought this in a million billion years. It looks kind of like more of that free type jazz, but this thing was funky. That's what he said on his channel. He goes, this thing had funk. And that's, you know, you know, I'm a huge funk fan. So I bought it because of what he said on his channel. It was a big help. There was a Chris Tunes from the Man Cave, another great ch channel for jazz. He was showing this. It was Clifford Brown. He had got in a better pressing. He was going to get rid of this. I got a hold of him. He sold it to me. Uh, it's great. Love this. But I got that from listening to his channel. You know, Andrew, Tales from the Crate, he shows some jazz. He shows some of this more, this really weird stuff that's way out there, like Sun Ra. I'm not into it as much, but I like to hear what he has to say for it. Uh, Ken Mick. Caliph, I believe. I'll, I'll put it down below. He has this huge jazz channel, but he writes for jazz magazines, so you know you're going to get something good. And then there's other, you know, there's Chris, First Pressing Goodness. He's always finding jazz, talking about jazz. I enjoy it. So many jazz channels to get into there. I'm no expert on jazz, that is for sure, and I don't claim to be an expert. I know what I like. I like Miles Davis. That's my favorite. Because when I look at it, I like the trumpet over the sax. I don't like uh, <laughs> bagpipe jazz whatsoever. Clarinet, not a big fan. I like the drum, bass, trumpet. That appeals to me. You'll figure that out. So that's kind of my gateway. That's how I got into jazz. In 2003, in my mid-40s, I finally, for the first time, said, jazz doesn't suck. And I just said it sucked because I didn't know anything about it, and I had nobody to show me, nobody to help me. And a neighbor, just took a neighbor across the street to come over and basically look at my jazz and kind of tell me, God, that really sucks. And it really changed. It changed me a lot on how I listen to music. So I, I hope that helps. There's some hints on things that you can do um, to kind of help find what appeals to you. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening. Bye.